Hey guys, welcome to Top Percentile. My name is Anne Dabey. I scored a 99.99 in CET 2020. Today's topic is about how many hours you should devote to CET and how many how many hours you should be putting in for prep. And this is a question that we keep getting time and time again. This is the most common question that we get because you want to think: Is four hours enough to crack JBIMS? Is two months enough to crack JBIMS? Is you know whatever kind of question like is sixty marks enough to crack JBIMS? It's you put any kind of question to it: Is this enough to crack JBIMS? That's it's always something enough to crack JBIMS, right? It's always there, and it's a fair question to ask. But I feel like it's not the right. You need to know the answer yourself, rather. Like it's a very self-explanatory answer. Now I'm going to help you answer it, right? I'm sure you guys have seen the meme. Uh, there's that I, I forgot what it's called, but there's that I think J John Peterson. He's someone's asking him is four enough, and he says number of wheels in a car, yes, but just an example, number of goals Germany would score against some any 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 good team, no, four is not enough. They'll obviously score a lot more, but uh, I am a German fan, so that's we always score a lot more. But the idea is that it depends on the context, right? Another example of this would be in a cricket match. So let's say the team that's playing first. How do you know what score is enough to win the next, the win the entire match? You're batting first. What is the target that you should be giving them, right? What does that depend upon? That depends on your capabilities. It depends on what target you want to set, what target you have, what target you'll be able to bring back. That again depends on your capabilities and target setting goals and everything. Depends on the hunger to reach the goal, how much effort you're willing to put in, and depends on your constraints. These are the four main things that it matters on. That it depends on, and this is how you need to think about yourself as well when you're trying to prepare for CED, right? So I'll give examples of me. Uh, Harsh and I actually had studied with college, so I'll take my own example for how I studied with college. I'll talk about how Aditya, Shrikant, Vidhan, and Ankit did with their job. So I'm answering for both people with jobs and with you know with constraints already on their halves how they've done it. But for any other questions, please leave it in the comments. I'll make sure that they reach out that they answer the questions themselves rather than me answering questions that I might not know the answer to. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. But again, coming back to this, when you are thinking of how how many hours you want to devote to this, first thing you want to think about is what are your capabilities, right? What is your capability? Would be how many hours you're able to dedicate without at a stretch without getting distracted from things. Now the reason I say this is because putting in ten hours is not useful unless you are making sure that the ten hours is useful effort, right? If I put in ten hours but I focus only for two hours, then I might as well put two hours and waste those eight hours doing something else, or maybe I'll do something else in those eight hours which is more productive. But if I put in five hours and I'm making you making sure that four hours are good out of that, I'm doing a much better task than putting ten hours and Using two hours worth of effort, right? So when when I talk about capabilities, I'm talking about what is your concentration level? How how well can you concentrate over a longer period of time? What all can you do in that time, right? So for example, if I sit and if, if you ask me to read something, if you ask me to read RCs or do verbal, I'll get bored in a while. I might not be able to do it as well. If you ask me to do puzzles, I'll be able to do a lot more of that, right? So again. When it comes to capabilities, it depends on which section you're solving. And my suggestion to my art students and to anybody who wants to prep is to keep mixing things. So if you're done with the syllabus and if you want to extend and go for a longer period of time, the idea is to do a couple of things at once. So you do a couple of puzzles, you do a couple of DI sets, you can do calculations for a bit. You keep changing it around so that you can do a wide variety of it in a shorter period of time, which is exactly what your final exam is going to be like, right? So the idea here is to keep your capabilities and to make sure that you are using the amount of time you put in and you're, you have an equivalent amount of effort coming out of that. You put in five hours, you want around four to five hours of effort coming out. And what has happened recently is because, because of so many distractions, so many reasons, so many things that go on at once, you're maybe studying on one screen, watching something else in the other, you know, there are lots, lots of things that happen and I myself do it as well. And or I'm listening to music sometimes and solving things. So what happens as a result, result of this is that your focus gets divided and you are paying attention to too many things at once. Sometimes that's okay, but if if you if you want to get proper effort out of out of the hours that you're putting in, please make sure that you are putting in doing everything that you need to maximize concentration. There are lots of guides and things available out online as well. To, to do this, you can search for it on YouTube, how to concentrate better, music that helps you concentrate better. Lots of things that do this. You can focus, meditate, it helps a lot. Please make sure you do that. 
and setting goals. I think putting a timer on the side helps a lot. Let's say studying for an hour. Study for an hour, take a, take a break for half an hour or 20 minutes after that. But that one hour has to be perfect studying. It has to be very dedicated studying. If you're able to do that, then it's perfect, right? So when I'm talking about capabilities, I want you to assess how many hours can you actually put in when you are sitting at a stretch, right? This kind of becomes a constraint as well, which is my fourth point. If you remember the four points that I said before this. So I'll come back to that part of it later. But the second thing is the target. A couple of people have reached out to me saying that I want to target only XYZ college, which is not JBIMS. And to them, the first thing that I, like if someone says that to me, I always think, yeah, JBIMS aim for me. If you're not aiming for JBIMS, if people aim for JBIMS, then they might get, if, if the day doesn't go well, then they'll get sit in. But if you aim for Sydney, then you might not get Sydney and might get something lower than that, right? That's aiming. You always aim for the stars, right? You always aim for the moon. Sorry. Oh, again, cliche, but you aim for the moon, you'll fall in the stars, whatever the, whatever the quote is. But the idea is that you want to aim for as high as you can, because if you do that, you put in the effort, you'll be able to gain a lot more from that than what you would otherwise. So your target has to be set accordingly. If I target, let's say JBIMS, the, the amount of work that I put in, the dedication that I'll have to it will be a lot more. And again, for motivation, we always, we started wearing this shirt only so that you can see how proud we are to wear it because we wear it in literally each and every video. But we do this only because we want you to know that we are proud of being here and that it matters. It makes a difference once you're here. We know how the industry views us, how people look at us once we're here. And that's what target setting is. If you have the target to go into JBIMS, your, your, the dedication need, need is a lot different from if, from what it would be if you're targeting something else, right? So keep that in mind. This is the second aspect of what you need to keep in mind when thinking of how many hours you need. First was capabilities, how much you can concentrate. Second was what is your target. Third is your hunger for the target. A lot of people say they want to go into JBIMS, but then they don't put the effort required, right? I might say I want to score in a cricket match. I might say I want to score 180, T20, I 180 score. Karne. But then I don't have the hunger. I don't have the hunger. There's no fire in my belly to do that. If I don't have such a thing, I'm not going to play well. I'm not going to do anything. I'll just put a blank, random statement out there and I'll say that karne. there is no fighting spirit. There's nothing that I'm doing. And that is where people go wrong. That's why target is different and hunger to achieve the target is different. Target is one thing. I might aim for iron calculator. I might aim for ABC. But if I'm putting in, putting in, uh, putting in efforts only to reach, reach, let's say, Chetna or something, or you know, uh, any other college or Sydney or any college for that matter. I'm not saying they're in bad colleges, but any college that is lower than I am, Calcutta, then I am not doing good to my target, right? So I need to keep in mind that my hunger has to be in line with the target setting that I'm doing. That's my point. First point, capabilities. Second, target. Third, hunger. Fourth point is your constraints. This is the easiest to do, to be honest. This is where experience will matter. So constraints would be sleep, college, jobs, or if you have any family work, etc. If you're running a business on the side, you're doing all of that. If you're maybe studying courses or doing finance marketing from now itself, all of that that you need to do. These are constraints that you can't control, right? You can't control how many hours, like you can control how many hours you sleep, but to be a healthy adult, it should be six to eight hours. And that's what I recommend. I mean, that kind of makes sense to put in that many hours of sleep. If you're reducing it, just make sure that the long-term health benefits are health, if, uh, health effects or the downsides of it are not as bad. So that, just keep that in mind that, you know, you are risking a, risking a good part of your life for that. So just make sure that if you're doing it for a couple of months, it's fine, but go back to six to eight hours later. But jobs, the homework that you'll be doing or the family work that you have, these are things that you have to, these are constraints that you have to work with, right? This is something that we have to do. I personally used to overcome this by studying in college. I used to study immediately after college. I used to study, so I used to pick assignments or pick teams where I used to work much, where work used to be divided much better. I used to work with people who I used to like. So I ended up dividing work better. We were understanding of each other's goals and we used to divide things better. We used to pick topics that we could better do in a, in a shorter period of time. Not that we picked easy topics, it was just that we, un we understood the topics better, so we used to pick those. But likewise, when it comes to doing jobs, there are efficient ways of doing work. And that's the idea. You want to efficiently do this. And I would suggest, I'll in fact tell Aditya Ankit or Vidhan, Harsh, Vidhan or Shrikant to make a video on this. Because they will actually be help, able to help you how they manage efficiently. I think Aditya will be great to, help, great to, to, uh, to answer this because he was working in ZS. Before he joined us, he was a consultant after his engineering. So he'll be able to answer how he's managed work hours better during that time. But the idea here is that you have a limited amount of time. 
you can control what you do in the other part of it. Are you spending two hours on Instagram? Are you spending time on YouTube? See, watching this content is still fine. You are still, this is still useful to you. It's helping you develop a better mindset. It's all good. But apart from this, are you watching Stranger Things Kanaya season on, on Netflix? Are you watching the India, India England test match that's going on? Baki kya chal wale, Wimbledon dekhte, kya kar rahe ho? Everything, all that matters a lot more, right? Because you have a limited time in the day. What are the things that you're giving up? And I'm not saying that please work all the time. A work-life balance is very important. You have to work out. You have to go out. You have to live a life as well. But please, maybe for a month or two, make sure that you're putting in all the time, making sure that you're, you know, you're as efficient as you can be. If you can put, so there's a, there's a, you know, the, the law of mar- uh, mar- diminish, diminishing marginal utility, sorry, uh, LDMU. Basically, you're saying that if I put in extra effort, my, if I put in extra R, my extra value of the effort is not going to be as much. So at that point, it's not worth putting that extra R after a point, right? So the idea here, you can Google this as a law of diminishing, ma- diminishing marginal utility. I'm sorry, man, I think my tongue is just not used to saying it. Not said it in a while, but if you Google LDMU, you'll get it. The idea is that after a point, effort is not going to be as effective. Extra effort would not be as effective. It's the same for all walks of life, food as well. The first bite of food is a lot better than the 10th bite, 20th bite, etc. You know, one bite extra after the 20th bite will be a lot less valuable than the first bite of the second bite, right? So when you keep all these things in mind, you have to kind of get into a goal of what you're doing. I used to do it by studying as much as I could. I used to go out, I used to make sure that I'm having a nice time in college and you know, making sure that activities were happening. At the same time, you have to make sure that your work is being put in and you're putting in the effort that you require, which is apt to your capabilities, target, and your hunger. You're keeping all these four things in check. If you're using these four guiding principles and pillars, you will be able to make sure that you're, you yourself will be able to answer this question. You will be able to make sure that you get or you at least put in the amount of effort required to get through JBIMS. So please uh, make sure that you're using these four pillars and tell me in the comments below if there is something you want me to stress on further, if you want me to explore explore, or you know, go expand on any topic more in depth. I would love to do that. I would love to have a conversation with you. Please drop your comments. I'd love to know more. But um, I hope this video is useful for you. Just keep in mind that you need to work hard. It is not like smart work, yes. But hard work matters a lot more as well. In a race between a smart worker and a hard worker, in, in, between a person who's just smart and a person who works hard, over the longer term, the hard worker will always win because you can gain a lot of skills through hard work. And that's what you have to gain through time, right? So please make sure that you remember this last part very well and use these four principles whenever you need to study and whenever you need to work. This is not only limited to CEDs. This, this is something that you can apply to your life, to any kind of degree that you're using, any course that you're doing, anything. Even during your NBA, these four things matter. And this is how you manage your time, right? So hope this video is useful to you. As I mentioned in previous videos, we'll be there for your guidance in the next two months. We are here for you. Please reach out and ask us questions or videos that you want us to make. We'll make those videos accordingly. But please keep it a two-way communication. We enjoy listening to your comments. We love getting feedback from you. And I especially love it. So please tell me if you like the video, didn't like the video, wanted me to expand on something more. If you didn't like that I said something or that I missed out on something, please tell me. I'd love to know if I'm wrong somewhere. Please tell me that as well. But yeah, see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much and all the best.